now. Okay, we've got our timer going. Even for the principal, we have the timer going. Believe it or not, truth to power. Can you introduce yourself, please? Sure. Hello, I am Lori Valancourt. I am the principal of Northampton High. You are. You are. And that is um, now. Am I wrong? Were you? Were you? This is your first year as the non-interim real principal of the school, right? That's right. Well, last year I became the non-interim in May or something like that. Okay, so cool. Yeah, a yeah. Full year, yes. So your interim year was quite a year, wouldn't you say? I would say, yes. I mean, that, that global pandemic hitting in the middle of it is really, I mean, I honestly have such a lot of compassion for uh, administration because it's just such a hard I also think, I, I, I asked uh, Lombardi this, I'm like, why do you do this? What is this? Why would you do this to yourself? But it's, thank God we have you doing it. And um, what do you like about ninth graders? What's, what do you like about them? You, because you used to be an English teacher, am I right? That's true, that's true. What do you like um, about them? I like ninth graders because, um, I really see the ninth grade year as a pivotal transition and being able to explore and kind of grow into yourself as a young adult and to figure out who you are and who you want to be. I think it's important transition year and I appreciate all the wonder and all the curiosity and the silliness before they shift into, um, you know, something a little bit more serious. So yeah. I appreciate the spirit of ninth graders. They are a lot of fun and they're so, they're so willing and they're so game. It's really cool. Right. Uh, and then but the high school has just so many opportunities for them to to really go with their passions. You know, I, I think high school in general, but our high school particularly allows that, allows people to follow their passions. So that's really great. What would you like as a ninth grader? So I was a little bit of that kid you just described. I was super interested in trying to figure out who I was and where I fit. And I did all kinds of things, but I, what I, what I wasn't was an athlete, mm -hmm. but I wanted to try to be an athlete, but I wasn't so great at it. So I joined the badminton team, which oh. I thought was somewhere kind of like close to being an, a an athlete. And um, mm -hmm. I actually learned in badminton my uh, freshman year. I was wow. really kind of good at it. Can you believe wow. it? Well, yeah. And then, um, and then as a freshman, I, I joined the cheerleading squad and um, I also was in the drama club. So I was just kind of like a little, I was a little bit of an oddball and I did kind of, you know, the fringy sort of things, but I had a good time. And, um, you know, I, school and academics weren't my favorite as a freshman, but the social part was my favorite. I really just enjoyed being a part of the school and being in new things. Yeah. And then the academic piece came later. Yeah, well, I think they lead to one another. You know, the one, as long as you've got, as long as you're engaged over here, you, you're, you always become engaged over there. That's the thing. Uh, you know, for me, it was history that really led me to engage in other places. So um, why did you, well, how did you fall in love with the idea of being an English teacher, by the way? Like, were you into literature or how was that for you? So I was always a reader, and I think like many English teachers, um, it was a place to escape and to to learn about new people and new cultures, even if it was through fantasy or fiction. Um, but I liked that idea of being able to just escape in a story and then be able to talk about it with my friends or within my community or in my classes and, and then write about it and use language and words to be able to express all kinds of feelings. And so um, that's what drew me to teaching English. And I think it's, um, it's a subject of expression, which um, allows you to build really good relationships with people sometimes and get to know them on, on different levels. So, yeah. yeah. Now, can, can you think of a book that really stood out for you in high school where you were like, oh my God, my mind's blown by this book? Um, let's see, in high school, what was my favorite high school book? Um, I don't just, know. just, I, just say, just say "Grapes of Wrath," because then I can agree with you. It wasn't any Shakespeare, and it wasn't, it wasn't, um, you know, I, I can remember having to read Catcher in the Rye, and I was like, "What's the big deal?" And mm -hmm. then I remember having to teach Catcher in the Rye, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this is cool," but then I was like, "But it's still not a big deal." Mm -hmm. um, so I, it. 
yeah, I, I can't, I don't know. I really yeah. liked the color purple in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, again, a story of relationships and, and growth. And um, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. That's cool. Now, what advice do you have for um, the ninth graders this year? They're entering virtually, remotely. Um, we're hoping that at some point that might shift. But until that time, what would be your big piece of advice for them? So I would encourage ninth graders to ask questions, to show up, to be okay with making mistakes and and sometimes looking a little bit silly because those are the pivotal moments where you're going to grow the most and you'll figure the most out about who you are and who you are as a learner. And to have confidence that the people who are here to help them really will help them if, you know, they make it clear that they can accept help and are willing to um, work together. So that's my biggest piece of advice. Ask for help, um, ask good questions, and be ready to make mistakes. Oh, you know, my grandmother had a a saying. My grandmother was in a Boston Irish, uh, you know, she worked a switchboard op as a switchboard operator, but she was filled with aphorisms. And one of my favorite was hers, was every fault is a fashion. You know, there's so many cool things come from mistakes. You know, so many inventions come from mistakes. So making mistakes is not a problem. That's really fertile ground. And I love what you say about communicating because now you're in high school. So in a lot of ways, it's really on you to communicate. We definitely want you to. And and we, we we will definitely accommodate any, I always accommodate any communication I get because I really believe in it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, look, thank you so much for being our principal. You're doing a great job. I know it's, it's, it's definitely a challenging time. But the cool thing is that you're living through a piece of history. And as a history teacher, you know, you'll have this always, uh, having lived through this moment, which has put a huge amount of strain, but also creative thinking uh, behind the process of, of making school happen this year. So we're really grateful for that. I'm grateful for all the teachers. I look forward to meeting all of the new students. Thank you, Mr. Cody. You bet.